that they go. These clouds are coming from the transporter erector lines. Uh, the transporter erector provides the propellants uh, to the vehicle. We're just clearing out the lines and the cold gas close -ups. the cold oxygen that is in those lines ends up coming into contact with the moist Florida air and produces literal clouds around the vehicle. Coming up, next major milestone will be Falcon 9's transition into startup. That means that the flight computers on board the first and second stage will have taken over the launch countdown and they'll continue to have control of the vehicle through the rest of the mission. Next major milestone will be the launch director giving their final go for launch. Go for launch. And with that call, all systems go for launch. Let's watch as this Falcon 9 takes the Transporter 6 mission to orbit. T minus 30 seconds. Minus 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And lift off. Good goals pitching down range. Stage one chamber pressure is not open. Just about 40 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 clearing the tower at Space Launch Complex 40 and making its way to orbit. We are currently throttling down Five, the Berlin two, 1D engines on the first stage in preparation for the point of max Q. It's a point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Maximum aerodynamic pressure is the point when the highest stresses are experienced by the vehicle during the ascent. With that, we are through the highest stresses on the vehicle. Coming up, we've got several events back to back. The first of those is main engine cutoff, or MECO. There will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. Stage separation is where the pneumatic pushers will separate the first and second stages. And then we'll have second engine start number one. We just heard a call out for MVAC chillin, so we've begun chilling in the turbo pumps in preparation to start the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. While the second stage engine is burning, the first stage will be performing a flip maneuver, and then it will do a boost back burn. That boost back burn will ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines uh, to make the first stage's way back towards land, since we are attempting a land landing today with this first stage. So again, those events back to back, Miko, stage separation, first stage flip, second engine start number one, and then the boost back burn. Stage one shut down. Stage separation confirmed. Invert ignition. Stage one, boost back startup. So there is those five events. Awesome shots from the ground. You can see the first stage boosting away. That was on the left part of your screen and the second stage continuing to burn. Now this burn on the first stage will last about uh, 47 seconds. And the second stage is going to continue burning for a while. It won't complete its burn until T plus eight minutes and uh, 20 or so second mark. Shortly after the boost back burn ends, the next major milestone will be fairing separation. You'll see that on the right hand side of your screen. T 
Stage one, boost back, shut down. So there is successful shutdown of the boost back burn. You're seeing some pulses there from the ground from our attitude control system. We use nitrogen gas as our attitude control medium, and it helps us keep pointed in the correct direction. Here you can see the bursts firing on the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen as we are also deploying our Bearing grid fence. Fairing separation confirmed. On the right-hand side of your screen, you just saw fairing separation. We may get a view of those fairing halves. In fact, you can see it on the right-hand side of your screen, just behind the Merlin vacuum. Heading back to planet Earth, we will be attempting to recover both of these fairing halves once they land back in the water on a recovery vessel named Bob. Now, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're about four and a half minutes into today's mission. We're in the first of two Merlin vacuum burns. First burn will last until about the T plus eight minute and 20 second mark. Next major milestone will be the first stage's entry burn. First stage is on the left-hand side of your screen. And we're now looking at a view uh, down the body of the first stage, past two of the grid fins back at planet Earth. Now we execute the entry burn in order to slow down the first stage before hitting the densest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. Without that burn, we'd be only using the atmosphere to slow down the Falcon 9, and that puts a lot of extra stresses on the rocket. So we ignite three of those Merlin 1D engines to slow down as we hit the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. We had an on-time liftoff, 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time, from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And we're carrying the Transporter 6 mission on the second stage right now. It's SpaceX's sixth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program and our first mission of 2023. We're targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbit per year. And we also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch about once a week. Now, these small sats can ride to space on our Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and the Starship vehicle in the not-too-distant future. You can see that the grid fins have deployed on the first stage. We've got four of these hypersonic grid fins near the top of the stage. And uh, once we get into the thicker parts of the atmosphere, it's only the grid fins that do the steering.